Hey, good afternoon for the Space Hall Power Development Group, uh, comprised of myself, Lewis, uh, Christopher, Jeremy, Joseph, and Rudy. Uh, we're advised by Dr. Pablo Rangel and uh, Dr. Paul Jaffe of the U.S. Naval Research Center. Uh, our project's uh, titled The Development of a Radio Frequency uh, Photovoltaic Modular Deployable Ground Power Receiver for Application in the Space Hall Power System. Uh, so, space solar, uh, with space solar unfiltered continuous sunlight is collected and converted into DC power using photovoltaics on large satellites in space. Uh, this power is then used to drive a power beaming, sy uh, a power beaming system uh, that transmits a, uh, an RF beam to uh, receivers here on Earth uh, that collect this energy and convert it back into DC power for uh, storage and distribution. So, our uh, problem we developed for this project. We recognize that both defense and disaster, re uh, disaster recovery applications of space solar uh, would almost certainly require the development of a tactically deployable power receiver for, uh, to satisfy operational and transport requirements in theaters, and uh, no work has been done in this area to date. Our, our objective was to develop a novel approach to a wireless power reception in space solar power system uh, by developing this modular deployable ground power receiver. Uh, which integrates both uh, microwave and solar energy collection and conversion. Uh, we had a variety of deliverables in this project, including uh, concept of operations, uh, 2D and 3D modeling, and uh, we also developed this uh, wireless uh, wireless power transmission tabletop demo, uh, inspired by Dr. Paul Jaffe. Uh, we made some uh, electrical electrical modifications, including using two solar panels and some different uh, upgraded electronics. And on the, on the bottom right, you can see uh, the LED lighting up using the wireless. So why RF and TV? Uh, well, our solution utilizes the unused area on top of uh, containers in the satellite uh, aperture. Uh, the, the goal here was to maximize the collection of renewable energy uh, sources, uh, eliminating the, the single point of uh, failure in the power generation. Uh, two main applications we considered for the for, for this project was this defense and energy security and uh, disaster response and recovery. Uh, on the defense side, there's uh, obviously a need to reduce the uh, logistical burdens and uh, by minimizing the energy resupply risk involved with transporting fuel across uh, IED uh, lane roads. On the disaster response side, this was uh, inspired by the situation in Puerto Rico. Uh, the necess necessity to restore uh, electricity to critical infrastructure and recovery, op uh, recovery operations. So the requirement summary, uh, stakeholders were that of the defense uh, logistic agency, the DOD and the Red Cross. Uh, the design was for that to be of, uh, set up by no more than five personnel to also operate in remote locations such as desert environments and uh, tropical environments. Now the module were to be maneuvered by um, military helicopters, forklifts, and flatbed loaders. The system would also uh, be protected by a perimeter with access control. Now the project was to convert the radio frequency energy at 5.8 gigahertz and solar energy to DC power at 6 gigahertz, and to also store the power within the echo containers for 12 hours usage at 50 normal load, or 50% normal load. Now the offset power of 10 containers would be that of no less than 200 kilowatts, which is roughly about 100 person uh, board operating space. Uh, now the design criteria was the modularity, the complexity, deployability, the cost, stability, and mechanical safety, the temperature control, and the PV panel integration. Now the selected concept that we decided to go to was uh, that of the gold wing container with the front door and no rear door. Now the reason was to maximize the uh, uh, PV collection areas, as uh, Lewis had mentioned before, on top of the containers, as well as to allow access to the front door without the need for a larger area. Now, uh, it being open with the gold, ring, gold wing doors uh, was to allow passive cooling through the echo container itself and the possible spin-off application. Now, the structural modifications needed was that of the uh, roof frame, the gold wing doors, the gold wing doors with a PV subframe and the integrated battery pack mount. Now the assumptions that we came up with was the retina was a PCB flexible panel to be spooled um, with a self-retracting spool uh, located in the center of the container. The average intercepted power
power was uh, power density uh, was 50 watts uh, per square meter. Now each container uh, with the area um, was going to be uh, output power of 20,000 watts, so 10 containers would be about 200 kilowatts. And we did all this in compliance with the IEEE standard, the C95.1 of safety standard. For our case study, we chose an area that I'm familiar with. This is Combat Outpost Hanson in Morgan, Afghanistan, where I was deployed with India Company 3rd Battalion, 9th Marines. This base has been decommissioned and its image is publicly, publicly available through Google Earth. Energy is vitally important to operations in a remote combat outpost. Currently, deployed units rely on JP-8 to meet their energy needs. This fuel is brought in by a convoy of trucks over IED laden roads. This method not only puts military logisticians who are not trained to fight at risk, but this also creates a strategic choke point. If the enemy was to cut off friendly units from their fuel source, all the technology of modern 21st century warfare that we enjoy would be lost. We would not only lose our ability to conduct mountain patrols, but our situational awareness and even communication would be lost. Our project aims to address this strategic risk by designing a modular, deployable ground power receiver that can rectify energy that has been transmitted via space solar power stations. <coughs> there are calculations using only 10 units. Enough power can be rectified to meet the energy needs of this entire combat outpost. As you can see in this image, the yellow box shows the required area, area required by the rectifying antennas. And the blue circle is the diameter of the power beam that would need to be cordoned off as a safety precaution. If I could direct your attention to this white area right here, these are three fuel bladders full of JP-8. That's currently meeting all the energy needs of the combat outpost. You can see by comparison with the yellow box, that there's not a significant amount of added required area necessary for our receiver pack. Now a few words on our design. It is necessary that any new military equipment be designed to integrate into current logistic operations. With that in mind, we decided to package our rectifying unit into a modified 20-foot hypo shipping container. You can see the linear actuator is used to operate the doors, the control panel, and the photovoltaic Swivel panel. I'll speak more on that in a moment. We have a motorized spool for the flexible spectrum material. And a power wall for energy storage and power regulation. We chose for each unit to have its own power storage as opposed to training a separate power storage unit. This design allows logistics to be simplified and makes each unit a completely modular system that can be scaled up or down. If one unit becomes unserviceable, it can be taken out and replaced with minimal disruption. The design of this unit is intended to shade the electronics and power wall, as well as to allow for maximum airflow. Through research, we decided for a rectifying antenna to use circular polarized folded dipoles. The circular polarity is necessary, assuming that the source of transmission is in orbit and not fixed. There is also the added benefit that the number of antennas required in a given area is half that of a linear polarized array of antennas. This antenna array is to be printed onto a flexible material that can be pulled inside the unit. For added redundancy, we decided to add photovoltaic panels to the container. While the production energy is not sufficient to meet the requirements of the combat outpost, it will produce enough energy to power the interior electronics of the unit, such as the motorized spool. Since the units are intended to be stacked and transported with other shipping containers, the PV, the PV panels could not be mounted on the outside, so we designed the PV panels to swivel and face out during deployment. <clears throat> so uh, on our current progress, we are completely done with the spool, and we are about 70% done on the container module. Um, a container cost est estimate on the actual size, um, for one container it would be about $47,000. With 10 containers, that would be $470,000, or equivalent to 94,000 gallons of gas at $5 a gallon. Uh, for the system configuration, um, for the system deployment, the deployment site is, will be scanned by a drone and cleared the major debris. Uh, the containers will be then airlifted and unloaded to predetermined locations. Um, the golden doors are unlocked and will be opened. Uh, they will be manually rotated and the PV panel sub 
frame will rotate 180 degrees. Um, a line of 90 degrees to each container side is marked out to a predetermined length. And uh, ATV hook up to the receiver and will drive it down the line straight. And for retraction, this retraction will be remote control. Uh, here is a schematic. So as you can see, for ease of deployment, each container will be placed side by side. And up top, you can see the uh, PV panels being uh, exposed. Some of our design strengths, the, the design is simple and it's a reliable structure. It will be easy to transport with existing methods. The spool is safe and reliable means of deployment. And the go-wing people swivel door design is novel and could have spin-off applications. The swivel side is here. <laughs> uh, so future work for this project, uh, there's a necessity to uh, design 